So behind me are the great walls of Atusas. This is the largest site way up on the hills. But you can see the style is exactly like we see in Peru, in Italy, and even in Egypt. And so they have these lions protecting the site, the entrance. These just really surprised me, just the sheer size of some of these. Even at Hattusas, but and also at Alahuyak, um, we see other ones as well, which we'll see shortly. But, but these are huge. They're kind of puffy, like the ones we have in Peru. And also, um, they must have bought these up here from much further down, suggesting they had some kind of megalithic technology to create these incredible polygonal cyclopean walls here in Turkey. So it's interesting to to see the style of these, uh, these 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 megaliths. I mean, they are not on the on the scale of uh, Saxe Huaman, but there are some similarities, uh, both in the polygonal style of the architecture and in the relatively close fitting and careful and careful cutting of the the stone you don't get quite get that feeling of stones melting together that you get at Saxe Huaman but uh, if I were to come across this uh, in some corner of Cusco I wouldn't feel that it was completely out of place I might think that it was perhaps an attempt by a later culture to copy the majestic work of uh, Saxe Huaman, but the, the similarities are uh, intriguing, particularly since we're completely on the other side of the world uh, and supposedly in a different uh, different period of history. Uh, it's quite it's quite fascinating to find the same solutions being arrived at, and it's impossible not to speculate about the possibility of a remote common influence having some effect on on both uh, areas and places. What do you think about the idea that, because um, obviously we have them in Italy, and they're, they're put down to the Pelasgians, yes, and possibly the Etruscans a bit later, yeah, and then you get them in Greece, you get them even in Albania that I've seen some yeah. photos pop up um, yeah. and so it's quite interesting there seems to be a whole culture in the Mediterranean and another one you know which stretched into Egypt and another one in South America yeah see what I'm what the idea that I'm interested in uh, in, in exploring is that a number of archaeological sites may have been misunderstood uh, and that you may have a much earlier layer of megalithic architecture uh, which may even have belonged to a global culture uh, of remote prehistory and that these sites have then been settled by later cultures uh, who in the process have contaminated the carbon dating record uh, and who have added their own often inferior structures on top. Again, I think that's clearest in Peru uh, with Saxe Huaman, where I think the case for uh, a very ancient megalithic phase uh, which was imitated rather poorly by the Incas is increasing, being increasingly well made. Uh, and it may be that we're dealing with, a, with a, the, the, the traces of a global culture of that kind. I think we should keep an open mind to that uh, in any way, um, because it's a very distinctive style of, of architecture. But I have to say, this is not as good as Saxe It's uh, It's there, you can see the similarities, but it's not, it's not as good. That was the work of masters. This looks more like the work of apprentices. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah, yeah. It's still quite chunky. It's I'm chunky. A, yeah. It's chunky. I mean, these are big. These are big blocks. Uh, the ones at the top would be under under a ton, I would think. Um, but uh, down here, we might be into the two two ton range, two three ton range, and and and, and mm, no, I don't think so. Well, we don't know how deep it goes. No, exactly right. We don't know how deep it goes. Then the you know the gateway, fifteen twenty tons probably pieces. So I don't know the density of the stone, but uh, certainly it's big. It's a uh, big, strong megalithic work, yeah. and nicely and nicely, nicely jointed. I mean, it's this, it's this jigsaw puzzle pattern of the joints that rings the most bells with with Saxe Huaman. Yeah. So we're just here at Hatusas at the main site. Behind me, I didn't realize this just now, but obviously this is like a, a kind of pyramid. It's like being constructed. The tunnel goes through the pyramid with the polygonal construction at both ends of it and a sort of corbelled roof all the way through it. And behind me 
it's, it's like a massive elongated pyramid. Um, I did not expect to see something like this uh, in Turkey whatsoever. So it's quite a unique construction here and it's obviously a vast Hittite site. And this is just one small part of it and it's simply amazing. I've never been in a pyramid. And it's not quite a pyramid. Kind of cold that vault. Yeah, it's nice, yeah. The thing is that I get the feeling that the Hittites may have brought a few ideas back from Egypt. Yeah, it's you know? essentially a cold vault, rather rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's interesting to know where some of these influences and ideas come from. Absolutely. Talk about light at the end of the tunnel, eh? <laughs> <laughs> ah. example. A lot, of, a lot of work went into making this. Absolutely. That's a serious piece of architecture. It's very reminiscent of Egypt. Yes, yes. I think they brought back a few ideas first. I mean, as you said, it's very, very similar to, to, Egypt, uh, to Italy and Africa. Yeah. You know, a lot of the cultures in Egypt, you know, clearly do come from Turkey, from the Phrygians and things like sure, that. So I mean, the, the, these parts of the ancient world were in contact. But, they were sharing so, ideas. Yeah. The, yeah. the Egyptians were the masters. And uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you know, this this has got a certain a definite feel of Egyptian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. architecture yeah. and also and also the, the sense of a a crude corbel vault i mean it's in a way it's like a mini grand gallery absolutely but yeah. done yeah. done pretty rough with none yeah. of the finishing off absolutely but essentially the same idea and and um similar kind of length too actually yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely but as i say whether it's uh, got a sacred purpose or whether it was purely uh, secular as it were in the purely sense a, of purely a pedestrian tunnel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I have a feeling that, that it had some it had some important purpose. Otherwise, why go to that trouble? Just just have a cut in the, well, you know, just. I mean, this is this apparently is an or artificial or mound. Yeah. Um, so you just if you want pedestrian access, you just you just leave a yeah. just just cut yeah. it open and yeah. let people come through. Unless True. unless there's some very True. strong reason to do otherwise. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, unless it's the whole um, you know the Hittites trying to impress yeah. you know people coming here from outside from different areas. You know, coming here yeah. and seeing, you know, this is where the rulers are in do, touch guys. with the gods. Look what we this can is, do. Yeah. yeah, you know, and also foreign envoys and things like this. They're yeah. going to go back to Egypt or, yeah. you know, Assyria or whatever and say, my God, this place. Oh, you know, yeah. We better not mess yeah, with exactly. them. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. So, has, uh, has this been reconstructed now? I don't think so. No. I wouldn't well, have thought they, so. They had a seriously good diamond calling bit then. Did you have a look? If you have a look at this one and that one, they had some seriously good diamond coring bits. Yeah, yeah it's they're nice. perfect. That's a nice, um, it's a nice drill hole. Uh, it's say. a ripper that one. It's really good. It is. The depth is the same and it's broken out the it same. It looks old too. It does, but... Yeah. So it's sort of got an old kingdom feel to it. Well again, yeah, it's got an old kingdom feel. Yeah. The ancient Egyptians were drilling perfect yeah. perfect holes mm. deep into granite. Yeah. And we find the drill cores, it's a mystery actually. How yeah, they did it, yeah. The speed the drills were turning. Yeah. You know, you can you can estimate that from the grooves in the core. Yeah. As I say, I think that uh, you can see a path right the way through the woods, right the way to the left of this huge rock cliff in front of me. And you could either have gone underneath and up the almost corbelled uh, tunnel, or seemingly you can come over the top and go through another gateway here. But why have two different types of gateway? You know, up and over and, and under. It just doesn't make sense. You know, as you say, unless there is one was for the plebs and one was for the uh, you know the royalty, um, or one had a, a functional, one had a symbolic purpose. But I do think that that entrance down there is something that foreign envoys and all the rest of it could enter through and just see how impressive this was as they were actually passing through it you know how strong a fortress this actually was there was something that they would then be able to take back and they'd say oh how did you get in there through this tiny little tunnel you know
but obviously there's another entrance where the um, the lion gates are and that was obviously for vehicles you know chariots and things like that coming in and out so yeah once again there's a certain feel of uh, Egypt here you know I think there's a feel of Egypt that probably goes all the way back to old kingdom times now whether they saw it over there and thought we'll have some of that or what I don't know but also there does seem to be a feel of you know sort of Italy other countries as well you know probably Greece as well um, but there's definitely an Egyptian feel here and I mean obviously that's because the two cultures had this cross contact um, when they weren't warring each other you know there was quite a lot of trade relations um, relations with dynasties and things like that you know daughters from one would be given to the other See this? See this stuff? Right? So you, look, look, this is the other entrance, directly above directly the one below, the one below yeah. which almost seems absurd. And as the gentleman with the beard over there was saying, yeah. you know, almost certainly there was a bronze gate yeah. there, which which pushed in yeah. this in this direction. Right. Um, so obviously this was a fruit fair yeah. coming in, going out, going out. Obviously this is what you would see going out. Yeah. And there would be a huge gate there, which would be pushed in yeah. as you were coming in. Yeah. But why? Why? Two, you know, why an up and over, and why mm -hmm. another one underneath mm. to be impressive? Yeah, yeah these are restored the sphinxes, right? This oh. is not, they're, they're not re replaced, and it's not original because the original is in the museum. This is some kind of uh, yeah. model, yeah, absolutely. some kind of modern yeah. model, yeah. yeah. Yeah, interesting yeah. variation. Well, it's certainly been gra idea. greatly restored. No, I think it's a, I think it's actually a, a substitute. Okay. Because apparently the originals are in the yeah. National Museum. But once again, you've got the slight feel of Egyptian here. Yeah. Sure. With the hair coming down like this. Hard to like get away from. Off. Yeah. Hard to get away from Egypt when there's a Sphinx involved. Yeah. This is not a Leonine Sphinx. This is a. I don't know. Well, is it Leonine? I don't. Well, it's sort of Griffin-like, I suppose. Griffin-like Sphinx with wings. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, ideas keep the cycling around. Yeah. You know, Egypt does keep coming into my thoughts. Every yeah, well, time Egypt must have been a huge presence in their lives. Absolutely, they must Trading, all have been aware of it. You know, dynasty relationships, yeah. looking up to it, yeah. learning yeah. from it. We'll have some of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if they've got it, we want it. <laughs> Sending their kids over for a bit of Egyptian education. Yep, exactly. You know. Yeah. yeah.